Hello, Miles Nida here with more Modern Yoga Movement videos for you. This is the second part of our yin-yang practice for the liver and gallbladder. In this part, we will be doing the yin practice, which will be focusing more on stretching, softening, and surrendering. So we'll be doing postures for a little bit longer, just relaxing in the poses for about two or so minutes. And the important thing to keep in mind is that you want to relax in a non-stressful state. We want to feel the weight of our body, so we want to feel gravity helping us to really relax. And we're combining that with our breathing. So if you can feel the weight of your body, feel gravity, and breathe, that can help us to experience deeper tension releases. And then when we're breathing, it's helpful to just inhale and feel that you're accepting the way things are. And when you exhale, you are releasing or letting go. So that can be of support in a yin practice. I will be demonstrating with some props. So we have a blanket, we have a block. However, you can still do this practice without any props. All right, let us begin the yin practice for the liver and gallbladder. So we're going to start with a wide-legged child's pose. And I'm on a hard surface here, so I'm going to actually use my blanket just to give a little more cushion for my knees. All right, so we're going to start sitting on the heels. And we want to widen the knees. So we're stretching the insides of the thighs. This is relating to the liver meridian. So nice wide stance. You want to feel some stretching here. And then you can walk your hands forward, resting on the elbows. I like to clasp my hands just so that I can press into the floor a little bit and send my pelvis back towards my feet. So we want to start with some long deep breathing, but eventually we want to be very relaxed and not too intensely focused on our breath, but more on surrendering, more on softening, feeling the stretching happening in the posture. If you feel like you can go further, you can stretch your arms out in front, rest your forehead on the mat. And we still want to press gently with the hands, sending the pelvis back towards the arches of the feet. And then surrender, let go. If you ever feel intense discomfort or pain, you want to lessen the intensity of the posture. And that's what props can support. But if you're just feeling a little bit of discomfort, like you're pushing your boundaries just slightly, that's good. You can just relax more, soften more, and just feel the opening happening as you're in the posture. So just allow your breathing to become softer. Your body becomes more relaxed. And you can kind of feel like you're melting in the pose. Some of these postures you can stay in for quite a while. You can stay maybe three to five minutes. But here we're just gonna do a couple of minutes All right, so let's start to come out of the pose. You can look forward, prop yourself up on your elbows, and you can even come up onto your hands. And you want to very slowly and very carefully bring one knee in, and then bring the other knee in. And we're going to go back into a child's pose just to give our legs 
a chance to adjust. And let's inhale here, and let's slowly roll up on the exhale. All right, I'm going to fold the blanket back up because we are going to use it again. But let us move into a sphinx pose right now. So inhale here, exhale, hands on the floor in front of you, child's pose. Gently draw the legs together, inhale. And exhale, let's come up onto the hands and knees and then come forward onto the belly. Now place your arms in front of you so you can rest on your elbows. And I like to have my elbows just a little bit in front of my shoulders, clasp the hands. And the feeling is again that you can press gently your forearms into the floor or press forward and send the energy back down the body. So here we feel a little lift up the front of the body. So the pubic bone, the solar plexus, the sternum lifts, and we wanna feel energy flow down the back of the body. So let's feel the shoulder blades slide down the back. The energy flows down the sacrum, flows down the legs out through the feet. You can just gaze down at the floor or look forward. And we just breathe here. So you want to press into the floor gently so that you can still feel relaxed. Soften the body. Just notice where you might be holding any tension. Just scan your body and see if you can relax it little by little. So just causing a gentle opening in the front of the hips. Then it's a nice counter pose to the forward bending. All right, inhale here and exhale. Let's come down. You can place your forehead on the mat, your hands alongside your chest. Let's inhale. And on the exhale, push up onto your hands and knees. And come back into a child's pose. On your next exhale, let's roll up. Okay, let's do a pigeon pose. So here's where a blanket can be helpful. <clears throat> so it'll, it can give us some support and it can help us feel like we can relax a little bit more. So you want your blanket folded. I like it about this height. Uh, it can be higher or lower, up to you what's more comfortable. Pl place it in the middle of your mat, the center, and you're going to have your hands in front of the mat, in front of the blanket, knees behind, and just bring your right knee forward. And position yourself so that the blanket is under your pelvis. So it feels like you're sitting on the blanket. And just look back, make sure the left leg is behind the left hip, and walk your hands forward. You can keep your hands on the floor, or if you can go further, place your elbows on the floor. So just like we did before with the Sphinx pose, gently press into the floor or press forward. And what this does is it helps us to uh, protect the right knee. We don't want to put the weight of this posture in the knee. So we send the energy back so that we can feel the weight more in our pelvis. So we start off with long, deep breathing but eventually we can just relax our attention to our breath and just feel a general sense that we're resting in a non-stressful state. If you're flexible enough, you can come all the way down 
onto the forehead, arms out in front. But if you notice that the weight goes more forward into the knee, then just gently push with your hands. Gently extend your elbows, getting the weight more in the pelvis. So you find a, a balance between making some effort and feeling that you're in the pose effortlessly. Again, rest in a non-stressful state. Here's a posture where we can feel the weight of the body, so feel the force of gravity, surrender to it. We don't need to hold ourselves up and breathe. And with each exhale, you can feel you're releasing tension. Again, some of these poses you can stand longer, but we're just staying for a couple of minutes. So let's look straight ahead, and then on our inhale, walk the hands back. And let's switch sides. So carefully bring the right leg back, and step the left leg forward. As gracefully as you can. Now look back and make sure the right leg is behind the right hip. Do your best to square the hips and then walk the hands forward. So depending on your flexibility, you can have your hands on the floor or the elbows. Whichever position you choose, gently push to get the weight of the body out of that left knee. We don't want to strain the knee joint and feel it more centered in the pelvis. If you'd like to go further, rest your forehead on the floor. And again, if you're down here and you've noticed that the weight transfers more forward to the knee, you push with your hands, gently extend the elbows, recenter yourself over the pelvis. As you breathe in, you can feel that you're accepting the way things are. And when you exhale, you are letting go. So you can think that any expectations you have about being in the posture, or about your flexibility or your openness, or maybe your general sense of well-being, just accept the way things are when you inhale and let go of those expectations when you exhale. Just be in the present moment, having a gentle awareness of the posture, awareness of being able to rest in a non-stressful state. Just be with yourself. All right, to come out of the pose, you can lift your head, carefully walk your hands back. And let's lift ourselves up, bring the leg back, and let's sit on our heels. Okay, the next posture we will do will be a spinal twist. So let us, I'm going to turn this over, because I like to sit on the folded edge of the blanket so it creates a more consistent uh, surface to sit on. So come forward, sit on the edge of your mat. You can have your legs extended out in front. And I like to sit more towards the front of the blanket so my legs are not pressing in to the blanket, but you do want to feel supported. 
All right, so this allows our pelvis to be a little bit raised and it allows us to feel a little more uh, openness in the back side of the body. Take your right leg, cross it over the left. This is called Marichasana. So this is the posture you can be in if uh, you need a little more support. Or you can also bend the left knee. This is called Ardha Matsyandrasana. All right, so we want to first start by hugging the right knee and start with a gentle spinal twist. So we're addressing the gallbladder meridian here on the outside of the hip and leg. And we're also twisting, so we're giving the meridians inside of the body, right at the liver and the gallbladder, some attention. But we're also physically giving the internal organs a little massage. So feel both of your sits bones. Your weight is balanced between the two. And to go further, you can place your right hand behind you on the floor. Twist a little deeper. You can even feel the flesh of your belly being drawn to the right. And if you'd like to go further, you can bring your elbow to the other side of the knee. Lift yourself and spiral even more. You can also bring your hand to the floor for a little more support and just feel in this posture, can you relax and soften and feel this nice abdominal twist. So wherever we're feeling tension in the body, let's soften it. You can think of the quality of melting. What does that feel like? Feel that sensation wherever there's tightness or tension. Melting. And let's do the other side. So carefully unwind and stretch out your legs. Now we'll take the left foot over and you have the option to keep your right leg extended or bend the right knee. Sit equally on the sits bones and hug the left knee. So we start here, but if you'd like to go further, place your hand on the floor behind you to give you some stability. Then you can place your elbow on the other side of the knee and draw your belly in a little bit so you can feel that you're encouraging the flesh of the belly to go more towards the left. Don't force anything. Just allow yourself to be in the posture. Now you can also bring that right hand down to the floor. So if you find yourself really pushing to go deeper into this twist, Soften. Connect again with that sensation of melting. What does that feel like? So at first we use the breath. We want to focus on long, deep breathing. We're inhaling acceptance, exhaling, surrendering and letting go. And then at some point, we can just allow ourselves to be in a more meditative state in the pose. It's okay to make little adjustments to be comfortable. And remember, you want to be at a place where maybe there's a little bit of discomfort and just see if you can soften. But if you feel any pain or intense discomfort, then relax a little bit more into a posture that feels more supportive. So we're balancing effort and effortlessness. All right, let's slowly and carefully unwind and stretch out the legs. Okay, we're gonna do one more 
yin posture. I'm going to turn to face forward for the first side. All right, so we're stretching our legs out in front. And this pose is called Gomukhasana or cow face pose, but we're just doing the legs, the leg portion. So since I'm facing you, I'm going to mirror you. I'm going to cross my right leg over the left, but the knee ideally is stacked on top of the other knee. So you, this is an easy version of the pose. The full version, you can pull the bottom foot under you as well. Look at your feet. Try to line them up as best as you can. I like to readjust my pelvis so it feels like I'm sitting more balanced on the sits bones. All right, so this is the pose, stacking the knees. You can place your hands on the floor, inhale, gently lift your belly, and exhale, walk the hands forward. So if you need support, use your hands and push, extend those elbows. Again, careful to not put the weight of the posture in the knees, but let it be more centered in your pelvis. And if you feel you can go further, then we come onto the elbows. I like to clasp my hands just so that I can push and feel a little more stable in sending the weight of my body back into my pelvis. You can rest your chin on the knee. Observe where you might be holding on to any tension. And here, let's feel the weight of the body. Surrender to gravity. So gravity plus breathing equals tension release. So you can feel where the pulling and the stretching is happening. And just feel that we're softening in those areas and allowing the energy to flow more smoothly, more freely through those pathways, those meridians. And that's one way to address the health of the liver and the gallbladder. And in some of these poses, we are actually squeezing and giving our internal organs a massage. Kind of like how we squeeze a sponge and we're getting the dirty water out of a sponge. And then when we release the squeezing, we're allowing fresh water to come into the sponge. And in this case, it could be our blood supply. And let's come up slowly, inhale. So we're moving a lot more intentionally and more consciously when we're moving or doing these yin postures. It's good to have intentional movements anyway. But since we're moving so slowly, it's good to really pay attention. All right, I'm going to do the next one sideways. All right, so we did the right leg over. Let's do the left. I'm just going to do my other side. So stack the top knee over the bottom knee, and if you're flexible enough, pull both feet back. Recenter your pelvis. Line up your feet as best as you can. Inhale here, a gentle lift at the belly, and then hands on the floor. Exhale, lean forward. Push with your hands. Send the weight back into the pelvis. Inhale. If you can go further, come down onto your elbows. Still gently pressing yourself back. You can rest your chin on the knee. Just a reminder to rest in a non-stressful state. If for some reason that's difficult, then modify the posture a little bit. So 
surrender, let go. When you inhale, you can accept. So accept however you're feeling, whatever you're experiencing. And then exhale, let it go. So if you think anything should be different than it is now, that ultimately just causes us more pain or more disappointment or more suffering. So by seeing and accepting the way things are, we can let go of our expectations, accept imperfections, accept imbalances, And we can cultivate more sense of peace inside. All right, let's slowly come out of the pose. Walk your hands back, lift your spine up. And carefully come out of the pose, one leg at a time. And we can put the blanket aside You can actually use the blanket for this last part if you want. I will be demonstrating using a block. All right, so we're going to lie down on the back for the final postures. You can inhale, lift your spine. Exhale, roll down slowly. Using your, the lift at the pelvic floor, abdominals, hug your knees into the chest and place the feet on the floor. We're gonna do a bridge pose. Just touching your heels so the feet are not too close to your pelvis. Feet are hip width apart or shoulder width apart and parallel. Inhale. And on the exhale, curl the tail up, the sacrum up, the lower spine, the ribs until we come into a shoulder bridge. There's a straight line from the shoulders to the knees. And on the inhale, let's open the knees. So we're rolling to the little toe edge of the feet. Exhale, close the knees. If you can, you touch them together. Inhale, open. So we're addressing those meridians. Exhale. Let's do two more. Inhale, open. Lift the sacrum. The tail is slightly curled up. Exhale. So just carefully, careful to not arch the back. Inhale and exhale. Now let's inhale up a little higher. Now we can arch, but still curl that tailbone. Sort of like you're trying to draw your tailbone towards your navel. Let's do that once again, lift. So we're extending the hips, extending the spine. And on our exhale, let's roll down one vertebra at a time. See if you get the kidneys down first, and then the sacrum. All right, feet come together, knees apart. And let's rest the hands on the belly. Close your eyes. Again, rest in a non-stressful state, whatever that means to you. Exploring what that statement means can help us find new ways to relax, to relate to what is stress, where it hangs out in our body, in our lives, in our attitudes, our perceptions. Feel the weight of the body being supported by the mat, the floor, the earth. Now you can remain in this posture or you can stretch your legs out 
for a deep relaxation. And here you can use your block. I like to use the block on the lowest setting. You should, it's probably a good idea for everyone. And rest the occipital ridge or the base of the back of the skull on the block. And it's the edge of the block so that the block is not pressing on the neck in any way. So just make yourself comfortable. If you're not used to resting your head on the end of a block like this, it can feel a little unusual at first. So make little adjustments so it does feel comfortable. One goal is to just make sure the, to feel the back of the neck is lengthened. The front of the throat is soft and the chin lowers towards the chest. And just to check that we aren't holding tension, you can very slowly roll your head a little to the right. If someone were looking at you, they wouldn't be able to tell your head is moving. That's how slow you want to move. So you continue to soften and relax. Make your way back to the middle. And again, moving very slowly, very mindfully to the left. softening as you go. If you are feeling tension develop because you're moving your head, then move slower or just remain centered. If you are feeling relaxed and enjoying this sensation, then feel free to stay here as long as you like. You can pause the video and just come out of the posture when you feel ready. Otherwise, we will slowly come out of this deep relaxation by bringing attention to the breath. And let's take a deep inhale and a nice long exhale. Doing that one more time, inhale. This time releasing with a sigh. Uh, move your fingers and toes. Circle your wrists and ankles in both directions. And then carefully remove the block. So lift your head up and then place it back down. And let's hug one knee into the chest. Hug both knees in. Maybe you can hug holding onto your elbows and rock side to side. All right, let's roll over onto our right side and then press ourselves up into a comfortable sitting posture. And that completes this sequence.